Welcome to the Soccer Tavern, where we're discussing the history, culture, and philosophy of the beautiful game. My name is Dave, and in this series of videos, we're discussing the history of soccer clubs around the world. In this video, we're talking about Crystal Palace Football Club. Pull up a seat, and let's start the discussion. Crystal Palace FC is located in the southern part of the city of London. London is located in the southern central part of England in the United Kingdom. Palace currently play in the Premier League. The club's home ground is called Selhurst Park, which was opened in 1924 and holds 26,309 people. Crystal Palace was officially formed in 1905, but the club can trace its origin to a club formed in 1861. Palace's story begins with a famous glass and iron palace nicknamed the Crystal Palace that was built for the Great Exhibition of Hyde Park in 1851 in London. That palace was moved to South London a few years later and converted to a theme park tourist attraction. Employees of the Crystal Palace formed a team by that name in 1861. That club competed for 15 years, including in the inaugural FA Cup competition in 1871 before the club was dissolved in 1876. Matches continued to be played at the Crystal Palace grounds even after that club's dissolution, including all FA Cup finals from 1895 to 1914. By 1904, the Crystal Palace ground owners decided that they wanted to form a club. When they applied to join the FA, they were rejected on the basis that they'd have an unfair home field advantage for the FA Cup. The owners formed a separate company and club that would lease the grounds from Crystal Palace for its home matches, which for some reason was good enough for the FA. Not sure exactly why that solved the home field advantage issue, but the FA accepted Crystal Palace in 1905 into the second division of the Southern League. The club has three nicknames. Palace, the Glaciers, and the Eagles. The Palace nickname is obviously derived from the club's name. The Glaciers nickname was a reference to the actual Crystal Palace structure that the club played near. The building was a giant iron and glass structure, which we've already discussed, and often required maintenance. Glaciers are glass workers, and these workers often attended Palace matches. Additionally, the original Crystal Palace club that was formed in the 1860s had actual Glaciers as players on the squad, hence their nickname. Now, the Glaciers nickname was used from the early days of the club up to 1973. In 1973, Malcolm Allison took over as manager and wanted to change the nickname and culture of the club. He chose the Eagles as a nickname in reference to Benfica, the Portuguese club who was one of the most successful clubs in Europe at that time. Palace have been called the Eagles ever since. With the nickname changed to Eagles in 73, the club updated its crest. Prior to 73, the club used various crests that usually included either the initial CPFC, the words Crystal Palace, and or an image of the Crystal Palace building. The crest since the nickname change in 73 to Eagles has been fairly similar to the current crest. Today's crest is an aggressive looking eagle landing on a soccer ball in front of the Crystal Palace building and its famous towers that have since been destroyed by fire in World War II. The words Crystal Palace FC are in a scroll at the bottom, overall a pretty simple and straightforward crest. I'd like to discuss three important events in Palace's history in this section. We've already mentioned him, but Malcolm Allison's appointment in April 1973 was instrumental in shaping the modern branding of Palace that we know and recognize today. He changed the kits or jerseys from the Aston Villa inspired colors that the club had worn for nearly all of its existence to FC Barcelona inspired kits due to Barcelona's European success at the time. We've already discussed the nickname change to Eagles, which was inspired by Benfica's success, and that helped shape the modern version of today's crest. Allison didn't have much on-field success, but he was instrumental in shaping the branding of Palace that we know and recognize today. Skipping ahead a few decades, the next event I'd like to discuss happened on June 1st, 2010. On this date, Steve Parrish led a consortium of three other investors who were all lifelong Crystal Palace fans to rescue the club from administration, which we know as bankruptcy, and potential liquidation. Earlier that year, Palace actually slipped into bankruptcy and were issued a 10-point deduction in the table. 
The team fought valiantly that season and dramatically retained their place in the championship, which is the second division in England, on the final day of the season. Buoyed by remaining in the championship and being on solid financial footing with the new ownership group, the club stabilized and qualified for the Premier League only a few years later in 2013, where they still currently play. Speaking of 2013, the last event I'd like to bring up is that championship playoff final from 2013 that qualified Palace for the Premier League. On May 27, 2013, Palace beat Watford 1-0 in the championship playoff final to gain promotion to the Premier League. Wilfried Zaha earned a penalty that Kevin Phillips converted in a match that was said to be worth £120 million. Palace has enjoyed a nice run in the Premier League since 2013, which has only been less than a decade after potentially being liquidated. (laughs) Palace supporters don't have a formal nickname, but Selhurst Park is known for one of the best atmospheres in the Premier League. The Eagles' most passionate fans stand during the matches in the Holmesdale stand and can be heard throughout the match. I actually was fortunate enough to attend a match in person with my brothers in 2014, and we all were left very impressed by the supporters. (laughs) Palace has had relatively limited top flight success, so I'm only going to highlight a few players in this section. Jeff Thomas is a club legend who captained Palace through their arguably greatest ever period in the late 80s and early 90s. Ian Wright really exploded on the professional scene as a Palace youth player and bagged loads of goals for Palace before being sold on to Arsenal for a record fee at that time. He went on to win trophies with Arsenal and is still regarded as one of the greatest goal scorers in Arsenal and the English national team's history. And lastly, I'd like to mention Wilfried Zaha, who is an incredibly talented player on today's Crystal Palace squad, and Julian Speroni, who is a modern legend for the club, making 400 appearances for the club over 14 years. (laughs) Palace aren't exactly known for having stability at the manager position, with multiple managers having different stints with the club over the club's existence. I've already mentioned Malcolm Allison here and his contributions to the club. Other managers I'd like to mention are Terry Venables, who had two separate stints with the club and was a famous player from the 60s and 70s. Edmund Goodman is Palace's longest ever serving manager, as he managed the club from 1907 to 1925. Also, current manager Roy Hodgson has had a long and storied managerial career all over the world and deserves some mention here. (laughs) Palace's main rival is Brighton and Hove Albion. As we discussed in the Brighton & Hove Albion video, this rivalry really kicked off in 1976. In the summer of 76, Palace appointed Terry Venables as their manager, with Albion naming Alan Mullery as their new manager. These two individuals were already rivals stemming from their time as teammates at Tottenham. Both clubs targeted gaining promotion that season out of the third division. The clubs then met five times that season, with the fourth meeting, an FA Cup replay match on December 6th, 1976, really setting things off. After a controversial ending to the match, a Palace fan poured hot coffee on the Albion manager Mullery. Mullery then responded by throwing change from his pocket on the floor and screaming, that's all you're worth, Crystal Palace, and giving some none too polite signs with his fingers to the fans. The combination of both sides gunning for promotion that season, meeting so many times in one season, and the incident with Mullery created a fierce rivalry that continues to this day. It's also been helpful that the two sides have met in many meaningful matches since that December 1976 FA Cup match. The most recent important match was a 2013 playoff promotion match that Palace advanced at the expense of Albion. Palace's other rivals include lower division clubs Charlton Athletic, Millwall, and AFC Wimbledon. All are based in South London and location often breeds rivalry. The Millwall and Palace rivalry dates back to 1906 and the clubs have played over 130 times, which helped stoke that rivalry. Charlton views Palace as their main rival, but the feeling isn't quite reciprocated as we've already discussed Palace's main rival is Brighton and Hove. And lastly, Wimbledon has gone through a relocation and rebirth, so though Palace and Wimbledon are local rivals, each considers another club to be their main rival. The stats and records we're about to discuss are as of February 2018, which is when we are recording this video. Crystal Palace have spent 18 seasons in the top flight in their history. 
The club has no major trophies, but they do have a handful of lower division titles. Palace also have two FA Cup runners-up medals from 1990 and 2016. The club's biggest ever trophy, though, came in 1991 when they won the Zenith Data Systems Cup. What the heck is that? Well, it was a competition created by English clubs after they were barred from European competition in the late 80s and early 90s. It was played between England's top two divisions and Palace won it in 91. The club's record first team appearance holder is Jim Cannon with 660 appearances. The club's record goal scorer is Peter Simpson with 165 goals. Currently, Nigel Martin is the club's all-time clean sheet record holder with 111, but Julian Speroni, who is the club's current second choice goalkeeper, has 109 career clean sheets and could break that career record if he's given an opportunity in the future to play again. The club's record transfer purchase was Christian Benteke from Liverpool FC on August 20th, 2016 for about 27 million pounds initially, plus a potential 5 million more pounds in add-ons. And the club's record transfer sale was Yannick Bolasi to Everton FC on August 15th, 2016 for about 25 million pounds initially, plus a potential 5 million more in add-ons. And one last interesting fact about Crystal Palace FC, the club is the only team in the Premier League's history, which began in 1992, to have been relegated after finishing fourth from bottom. This happened at the end of the 94-95 season when Palace were the unlucky club when the Premier League went from 22 clubs to 20 clubs. So there you have it, a bit of history on Crystal Palace Football Club. Let's continue the discussion in the comment section below the video. Thanks for stopping by the Soccer Tavern. Hope to see you again soon. Cheers!